This is uh, 2829. <clears throat> so in this one, they draw a circuit. It has two batteries in it. One battery and then a resistor. And then coming down here, another battery facing the same way. And another resistor. And then it all comes together in the third branch with yet another resistor. So the top battery is 24 volts and the second battery is 12 volts. And these are 28 ohms, 12 ohms, and 16 ohms. And the question is simply, what is the current in each resistor and what is the power delivered to each resistor? So this is a case where we apply uh, Kirchhoff's rules to figure out um, all these unknowns. Our three unknowns then are the currents. So we'll have some current flowing from that battery. Uh, we'll have some current flowing from this battery, I2. And then somehow those will probably come together and we'll have some current flowing through this part of the circuit here. So three currents to describe the entire circuit. All right, so the first rule is the junction rule. Let's look at this junction here. We have I1 and I2 going in to the junction, and I3 coming out. So we have I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. And then we can do two loop rules, loop here and a loop here. We'll go clockwise through the loop, and we'll get what? Let's see, if you go across a battery that way, it's positive, so we'll get 24, and then we're going along the current direction, so that's minus um, I1 times 28, minus 28 I1. And then we go against I2 on a 12 ohm resistor, so that's plus 12 I2. And then we go against the battery, so then that's minus 12. Okay. So that was this loop here. And now let's do this loop also clockwise. We go with the battery 12. Uh, we go against the 12 ohm resistor with the current I2. So minus 12 I2. And then all the way around and with I3 minus 16 ohm resistor. And then back up. And that equals zero. So we have a system of three equations and three unknowns. And like I showed you in class, there is sort of a, a way to systematically solve these without having to master linear algebra. And the reason it often works with Kirchhoff is we usually have some zeros in these equations. This one has no I3, this one has no I1. So I'm going to show you the systematic way to do it. <clears throat> First we write the equations in terms of their I1, I2, I3, and put the constants on that side. So this one we just write I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. <coughs> this one is minus 28 I1 um, plus 12 I2. And then no I3. And then the constants make 12, but they go to the other side to make minus 12. And then this one has no I1, but it's minus 12 I2. And it's minus 16 I3. And then it's 12 here, which goes to the other side to make minus 12. So if we just go adding those up, um, what will happen? Well, if we go add them up, it won't be the right thing. The right thing won't quite work out. But we can manipulate it before we add them. Um, for example, the first thing we would want to do is uh, multiply I, the first equation by 28. Because okay. you can see, if we multiply this by 28, then it'll cancel that, and we'll have gotten rid of I1. So we multiply that by 28, we multiply that by 28, and we multiply that by 28. And since it's an equation, we multiply both sides by 28. We multiply 0 by 28, and we still get 0. Okay, so now if we add these two, 
I2, I1 is now 0. So we've removed it from the equation. Um, but now we're still left with some mixture of I2 and I3. So we can see that. So we want to decide which one do we want to uh, get rid of. And we're going to get rid of I3. It's easier. There's only two terms here. So what we need is for 16 to turn into uh, plus 28. And if this thing were multiplied something to make it plus 28, then those two would cancel. And just uh, multiplying this one by something will not affect the I1. The I1 will still cancel. So what we multiply it by <coughs> is um, uh, 28 sixteenths. Uh, negative 28 sixteenths. So this one is going to be um, times negative 28 sixteenths. Uh, that will uh, cancel or that will reduce a little bit. Let's see, my negative 28 sixteenths is uh, 28 over 16 uh, divided by 2 is 14 over 8, um, which is 7 over 4. So we've got to multiply these by 7 minus 7 fourths. So the two minuses will make this plus 7 over 4. And then multiplying this by 7 over 4, we'll do what we wanted. It'll turn it into plus 28. But we have to multiply the whole equation. We multiply this by 7 over 4. Minus 7 over 4 makes that um, positive. So these are multiplying these here. OK. So we add them up. And now our i1s went away. Our i3s went away. And all we're left with is um, i2 here. So 4 goes into 12 uh, 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21. So this is really 21 plus 12 is uh, 33 plus 28 is 61. So it's 61 I2 equals whatever's left over here. Um, this is 12, it goes in, it's 3 times 21. So 21 uh, minus 12 is 9. It's 9. So 61 I2 equals 9. So I2 equals 9 over 61 which is uh, 9 over 61, which is 0.148 amps. 0.148 amps. So there we have solved for one of the currents. So we went ahead, because mathematically it was easiest to solve for I2. Once we know I2, we can quickly start to find uh, the other ones. Once we know I2, we can come up here where we just had something in terms of um, I2 and I3, and we can plug uh, 0.148 um, into here, and then we have a number here, and we have 16 I3 there, so you multiply that, take it over, divide it by 16, I'm not going to do uh, the little algebra for you, and you find that I3 is 0.639 amps. And now we have I2 and I3. So we could easily get I1 then from this equation, or we can just get it from that equation. We can say I2 minus 3 is going to be some negative number that comes over here to make it positive. And I1, if you do that little subtraction, is 0 0.491. So that's the answer to uh, part A. That's how you get the answer that's, to get, that's how you get the answer to part A. That's one way to deal with these uh, systems of equations. So now we'll clean up the board and do part B. In part B, the 2829 asks for how much power is dissipated in each resistor. So you need to remember that uh, the power dissipated in a resistor is its current times, <coughs> times the voltage. Because remember, we could calculate the energy loss by each charge carrier as it uh, loses energy in the resistor. That would be the charge times the voltage difference, times the potential difference, is how much potential energy it loses. But if you wanted charges per unit time, if you wanted power, the energy loss per unit time, that would be the charges per unit time. So that's why it's current, charges per unit time. So P equals IV, but sometimes if, you know, it's more convenient to express it in terms of the things you've already calculated. So we already have the current, we have the resistance. So P equals IV, but that's also I times IR. So that's also I squared R. So you don't have to actually know the potential drop to get the power. If you just know the current and the resistance, that's good enough. All right, so the power uh, dissipated 
and the 28 ohm resistor, we just now just plug and chug, right? So uh, it's um, point, uh, uh, let's see, oh no, we're gonna get these right. So this is I1, so there's I1 in the 28 ohm resistor, yeah, so it's 0 0.491 amps. Squared times 28 ohms, uh, which is, if you slap that in your calculator, 6.75 watts. And the power dissipated in the 12 ohm resistor is based on I2. So let's see, I2, 0.148 amps. Squared times 12 ohms. And that is smaller, that is 0.263 watts. And then finally, power dissipated in the 16 ohm resistor depends on I3, 0.639 amps squared times 16 ohms. And that's uh, uh, larger again, that's 6.5 watts. And uh, those are the answers.